Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and today we're gonna talk about whether or not you should finish with anterior contacts and what Fremitus is all about. And I definitely have realized in the last few years that the way I was trained as an orthodontist and an ortho residency is really different than some of you very, um, I would call you occlusion-based general dentist, functional general dentist maybe. They have all of these kind of courses which are very, occlusion centric which i hey i greatly respect that and there's so many orthodontists that have zero sense of occlusion so i get that but i don't know whether you're learning this in the courses or you're taking what you learned in the courses first and then trying to bring it to your ortho but y'all are screwing up so this is what i know and i know this to be pretty f for sure they teach us in residency we do not want contacts on the front teeth at the end bilateral canine guidance sure you know Great lateral guidance, sure. Ideally class one if possible, but, but definitely we don't want heavy contacts on the anterior teeth. And we're gonna try to avoid all contacts on the anterior teeth. And this is even more critical um, in teens, you know, for sure, or even men up to age 22 because they can have a tiny bit of a late mandibular growth sort. So you need to give some wiggle room because there's nothing worse than having a patient outgrow your treatment and then have to get retreatment. And if you didn't mention that that was gonna happen or you didn't see a late mandibular growth um, chance happening, you know, in their genetics or their staff, then guess who's paying for that or giving a refund? Well, that would be you. So that was part of the reason why we're doing it. Also, there is something called Fremitus, and I'm going to read you the official definition of Fremitus. If you want to look this up, you can probably look this up. But this is actually from, I'm going to quote this from the Dawson Academy, because I think they're pretty respected in terms of ortho and occlusion. So I felt like they were a good people to define, but you can go into any of your dental school textbooks to look this up. So, um, and I'm especially cautious about Fremitus because I had Fremitus as a teen. My orthodontist, who, by the way, was president of the AAO at the time, um, <laughs> of course, goes to show you nothing, right? You're supposed to be the best orthodontist in the whole world. If you're president of the AAO, you shouldn't leave people with Fremitus and damage their teeth. But anyways, Fremitus is the movement or vibration of a tooth when it comes into contact together. If you were to take your fingernail and put it on the front surface of a tooth, like eight, nine upper incisors, and have the patient close together. If the tooth moves, that's fremitus. Now, what's the cause of fremitus? Well, the upper anterior teeth can be retroclined and they can be encroaching upon the envelope of function. Maybe these teeth just need a little freedom of movement in centric and horizontal um, position. Um, you should remove anterior interferences um, from the CR to the CO to the MIP. So what do we do about this? Well, basically they're saying don't leave anterior contacts. So anyways, this I already knew because obviously it's happened to me. I had to have my ortho redone with a little bit of lower IPR for the Bolton and boom, bang, we're all good. Did the roots grow back? No. Can I eat apples? No. Can I eat bagels with my front teeth? No. So um, yeah, it totally damaged me. It was just poor orthodontics, you know, and I'm probably going to have to have massive, you know, $50,000 worth of treatment later to replace all my upper front teeth because my orthodontist as a teen didn't do a good job finishing the case. So yes, I'm a little um, aware of what it can do. So those are the reasons why I don't finish with anterior contacts. Yes, they did say retroclined incisors and I True honesty, I do have a little bit retroclined incisor, so that might have been part of the problem. But um, I've seen it happen also with proclined incisors. My goal is to just make sure that we have good guidance, good you know movements, um, not too heavy of contacts. And anytime also there's other issues, when you have heavy or even anterior contacts at the beginning, you can also get posterior open bite. It doesn't always start immediately, it could start later. And again, this can further cause damage, a lot of it just there's so many different variables. So that's part of the reason why I don't want to leave anterior contacts at the end. So hopefully now you guys understand. All right. Thanks so much.